Breadbox Media Programming is brought to you by... I actually met my wife on CatholicSingles.com, if you can believe that. Really? That's about Yes, I had never done that before. Didn't have any problems with dating. Natalie and Aaron met on CatholicSingles.com after they realized that they needed to find someone who shared their faith. Meet other faithful Catholics on the original Catholic dating site. Download our app today for free. Looking for a way to build daily prayer discipline? Seen the rise in mindfulness meditation, but not sure if it is possible to meditate in a way that's consistent with your Catholic faith? Just looking for a way to breathe new life into your existing prayer routine? No matter what you're looking for, Hollow is here to help. Hollow is a Catholic prayer and meditation app that helps users deepen their relationship with God through audio-guided contemplative prayer sessions. From meditations on the daily gospel to the rosary to daily examines, Hollow has something for everyone. Hollow is the number one Catholic app in the U.S. It is free to download and has permanently free content, but you can also check out all of the premium sessions for 30 days, risk-free, by signing up at www.hollow.com. Dot app slash breadbox. Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Lisa Handy and Friends. I'm really happy to be back behind the microphone today and to uh, take on a topic that is um, wonderful and to introduce you to a new friend of the show. Joining us today is um, Jim Coleman. And Jim is a Hollywood actor who's currently starring in the role of venerable Father August- Augustus Tolton in the St. Luke Productions version of Tolton from Slave to Priest. Um, the play is touring the country right now. He's best known for his starring role as Roger Parker in the hit Nickelodeon series, My Brother and Me. He has tons of filmography, including Ant-Man, The Quad, Ace Ventura, American Gangster, and Law and & Order. Jim says his role as Father Tolton is the most meaningful one I've ever had in my whole career. Father Tolton's story needs to be told. As a black man, this very important part of history is something that I want the world to hear about. I feel truly blessed to be the one to share Father Augustine Tolton, Father Augustus Tolton, with anyone who will listen. Welcome to the show, Jim Coleman. Thank you so much for having me, Lisa. Oh, it's a real treat. Um, I interviewed one of your uh, one of your partners at St. Luke Productions recently, and I've not had the chance to see this particular show, so I'm super excited about it. But I guess I want to ask you first of all, before we dive into Father Tolton, kind of a little bit more about your faith journey and and particularly how acting is now part of your story and your faith journey too. Well, um, for me. I've been a full-time actor for almost 30 years now. I uh, never thought I would be doing theater <laughs> again. I hadn't done it in 30 years. But um, I got this opportunity to portray Father Tolton, and I have to say that it has really increased my faith. It has uh, opened my eyes to so many things, and I'm so blessed to be able to tell this story of this uh, soon-to-be saint, the Venerable Father Augustus Tolton, and uh, I never thought I'd get a role like this. I mean, I've been working so many years, never thought this would happen, where I would love, really and truly love the uh, work that I'm doing as an actor. It's all been just business, 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 but now this is very personal, and I, and I love it more than, than I could even say. Did you know very much about Father Tolton before you took on the role? Not at all. I had never heard of Father Tolton two and a half years ago. Before I got, before I auditioned for this role, I had never heard of him. Uh, a good friend of mine, she encouraged me to audition. And when she told me it was theater and it was a traveling show, I said, that's not what I do. I, you know, I go to the set, I shoot, I come home. I don't do theater. I just don't. That's not what I do. She goes, 
it's such a beautiful story. And God laid it on my heart to have you audition for it. And I said, it's just not what I do. So she asked that I do her a favor. She says, please just audition. I auditioned for it. And uh, I told my wife and she told my mom and my mother-in-law about it. And they were like, oh, this is great. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you. And uh, they were really excited about it. And I wasn't. <laughs> but um, <laughs> ironically, someone else got the role. And I, t- I let him know. I said, listen, somebody else got the role. So, you know, you can, you know, but, but we, you know, I said, we gave it a good shot. My mother-in-law said, nope, nope, that's your role. I'm going to keep praying. <laughs> and my mom, and they kept praying and kept praying. And three months later, I was off at the job. Uh, so uh, it was definitely <laughs> prayer that got me this role. I know um, the story of Father Tolton because um I, I'm I, one of my hobbies is studying the lives of the saints. And I recently wrote a children's book that'll be out in October. And he is one of the, uh, the saints that we included in, in the book um, that was written wow. about six months ago. Um, and we, we were looking in the book to include all kinds of people to really let kids know that, you know, anyone can be a saint, but I'm kind of curious how you would describe father Tolton to somebody who's maybe never heard of him before. How can can you tell us a little bit about his story? I would say Father Tolton is the definition of faith. Here he was, born into slavery. Um, he was property. He was not really even considered much a person. He was property. He was chattel. And to continue and persevere after escaping slavery. Um, and, and one of the things I found fascinating about it is that the slave owners um, introduced the slaves to Catholicism. And after escaping slavery, his mother, uh, when they were in Illinois, sought out the Catholic Church. Now, you would think that anyone that was enslaved, whatever the slave owners believed as Christ-like or holy, you wouldn't believe that because they were owning, they were the owners. But she had such faith that she sought out the Catholic Church, and she involved her son. She made sure that her son believed in the Catholic faith, wanted him to learn. And through his faith in the Catholic Church, he knew that he had a call. And I would describe him as a person of great, great faith, even when no seminary in America would take him, when school, uh, Catholic schools wouldn't take him, when he was kicked out of Catholic schools because he was the only black kid in there, he persevered. So I would have to describe him as a person of great, great faith and perseverance. Does the production um, cover um his, I know it's a multimedia production. Does it cover um, from from his years before he entered the priesthood, um, or do we pick up um, once he's already ordained? Oh no, we start from the time he was eight years old, and we take you through his entire life from the night that he escaped slavery, through middle school, uh, through uh, uh, everything, all the way up until his death. We we portray his entire life. Amazing. And this is a touring production. So it's not like you're going to the same theater every night and and performing your role. It's different every place that you do it, correct? Yes, it is. Uh, it's it's a, basically a two-man crew. It's me and my stage manager. And we have all, everything we need. We drive to the location. We fly into the state. And then we get a Penske truck and we load it up with all of our equipment and we get to where we go and we set up and we put on a production. And I mean, it is a production that you would not believe it rivals anything that you could see on Broadway. It is that good. And we've been told over and over again, once you see a St. Luke production, you will never, ever forget it. What are some of the favorite places that you've toured and taken the show? The larger places, we were at the Cannon Center in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, St. John's University, Xavier University. Uh, We've been to quite a few very large, and some of the cathedrals, uh, Alton, Illinois, we went to, uh, I think, St. Peter's, and some of the the most beautiful cathedrals you could imagine we've performed in. And it was like bringing Father Tolton there. Uh, People, 
I've had people say they felt like it was him telling his story. That's so amazing. I, I can't imagine what it must be like to walk that journey. And he's probably become very um, special to you in your own spirituality. What What do you think you've most learned from him that um, you've tried to incorporate into your life as a man? One thing that I truly believe that I've gotten from playing this role is that now I truly try to look at everyone in love because Jesus said, I have a new commandment for you. You must love one another just as I love you. We are all one in Christ. And I say that every night in that show. Those are That's one of the, the lines in the show. We are all one in Christ. And it has taken a new meaning. It has given, it has given a new meaning to my life, to my thoughts, to my spirits, to my movement, because I truly believe that we are truly all one. I'm very convinced that um, as you and I record this, we've just, we've gone through, well, we are in the midst of a worldwide pandemic and we are in the midst of a societal upheaval um, that's causing us to really reassess the way that we relate to one another. Um, and and this, is, this has transformed so many aspects of our society, but we were really just beginning to have this important dialogue that's been needed for such a long, long time time. I've been thinking about our, our conversation today and really excited about it for the last few days because I feel like that some of what um, this show from um, told him from slave to priest, um, you know, it's that the dialogue and the performance of this could not be more timely and more needed. Um, are, are you able to actually go out right now and perform or where are you in terms of being able to share the show? At this point, we can't perform because we can't have any gatherings, but we are truly uh, trying to get the show out uh, in the fall, possibly early next year, but as soon as we can. But right now, we, you know, we just encourage everyone to be safe. Um, that's why we're doing these interviews. I mean, any questions, we can contact St. Luke Productions. Sometimes I do little uh, snippets of the show and they put it up on their website. Uh, but right now you could actually get like a um, digital audio recording of the show from St. Luke's and hear the entire show. Um, but as far as touring, we're still on hold until everything lifts and then we'll be back out to share the show. So we'll make sure that we have links to toltondrama.com and St. Luke productions.com in our show notes so everybody can get a hold of that. Um, but I, I would bet that once you are able to go back out that you're going to be incredibly busy because I think that Father Tolton's story is just one for <laughs> one for this time. Um, so I, pack your suitcase, Jim, because I think you're going to be on the road. <laughs> I think you're going to be on the road quite a lot. I have a son who's a full-time musician and he uh, he tours and their, unfortunately their tour dates for this year are done you know, are completed. And yeah. it's been um, really interesting with him. He's, he's young and, you know, just helping him during the last few months to not feel like giving up on what I know is right. his godly calling. And I would imagine that, you know, Father Tolton's perseverance maybe can help you through a time like this, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like right now during this pandemic, what's going on in the country, uh, the, the racial upheaval, uh, this is a worldwide pandemic. And I have to, I, in my mind, I say this didn't catch God by surprise. He knew this was going to be, this is, this is God knew. And what he's telling us is to take time to look at each other and understand this, uh, there was a time when what happened to George Floyd would not have been viewed the way it's been viewed now, because with the pandemic, everyone is sitting home. People are on their computers. Hundreds of thousands of people view that, that would not have normally seen it. And I think God is telling us that we need to regroup. Uh, like the, the the disciples, what was it when they were on the boat and Jesus was, you know, walking on the water and it was a big storm. We are in the midst of a storm, but we must keep our eye on Jesus. When Peter walked out on the water and he had his eye on Jesus, he was fine. But when he looked around at the storm, he sank. Jesus saved him. We can't allow the storm to 
make us sink. We have to keep our eye on our faith. We have to keep our eye on Christ. We have to keep our eye on what's important to God. And we will all get through this. And that's what Father Tolton did. He kept his eye on Christ. Do you have any sense of what he might have um, said um, to encourage us during a time like this? Um, exactly. I, I would say that Father Tolson would say, love one another as Christ has loved you. We are all one in Christ. And that's what he wanted to share. We are all one. And once we see each other as one, treat others how you want to be treated. See others how you want to be seen. Speak to others how you want to be spoken to. And we'll all get along just fine. <laughs> yeah, I think um, now is really the time for us to come to know the stories of those around us to unite ourselves more um, wholly with one another and with with each other's stories. And I think um, Father Tolton is uh, a saint for our times. I, I'm really excited to see how his canonization process will advance. Um, do you know anything about where they are in the process? He's been named Venerable do we have any sense of where things will go from here? Well, right now we know that he's venerable, and there are two miracles that are being um, reviewed by the Vatican. And hopefully, once those are reviewed, uh, beatification is the next step. That's awesome. Jim, I'm just imagining you portraying Father Tolton um, at the beatification and having Pope Francis watch your performance. Wouldn't that be amazing? It would truly be amazing. <laughs> Let's pray for it. Let's pray Let's for it to pray happen very soon. Very, very soon. Even if I will have to edit my book when it comes out, I hope that will be a happy <laughs> edit. Well, um, how can we kind of follow your work? Um, we, we will definitely have links to St. Luke's Productions. I'm wondering um, if you have a personal website or any place that we can follow you personally too to keep up with what you're doing. Oh, yes. Uh, JimColemanActor.com. Um, and Jim Coleman on Twitter, Jim Coleman on Instagram, but Jim Coleman actor dot com. Um, and that's that's where I am. I still do a lot of voice stuff. Um, a lot of people know I like video games and my voice is in tons of video games and uh, commercials and stuff like that. So right now I'm doing voiceovers, 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 keeping myself busy. But I'm just counting the days until I can get back to portraying Father Augustus Tolton with St. Luke Productions. Yeah, and if you're somebody out there who's a decision maker in your parish or has the ear of your pastor, I want to encourage you to reach out to St. Luke Productions and begin a conversation about how you can bring Tolton from slave to, pe to priest to your diocese or your parish or your organization. It's time for us to uh, have the story be told and to draw encouragement from it. Jim Coleman, any kind of closing thoughts before we let you get back to that voiceover work i just want to say thank you lisa so much for having me and i just encourage everyone everyone to keep your eye on christ keep your eye on your faith and understand that we are all one in christ and please contact saint luke productions to get us to your um to, to your city we, we we really want to come out and share these beautiful productions with you well, I hope you'll be in L.A. soon that I'll be able to see you at my parish. <laughs> I'm going to try to see if I can pass this along to my pastor and make that happen. Jim Coleman, thank Sounds you so good. much for your time, for all that you're doing, and God bless you. Thank you. Well, friends, that is it for this week's episode of Lisa Hendy and Friends. But don't worry, we'll have links to um, St. Luke Productions um, so that you can consider bringing this out. Definitely get a hold of it and learn more about the story of Father Tolton. Until next time, have a great week and God bless. These are unprecedented times for our world, our nation, and our faith. Cities are being burned. The debate rages over our national identity. And a global pandemic has shut down our parishes and deprived the faithful of the sacraments. Times like these can challenge our faith and our hope. Now more than ever, Catholics need to utilize technological advances to strengthen their faith. Endorsed by faithful bishops and cardinals, Breadbox Media is answering this need 
by providing on-demand podcasting that is faithful to the magisterial teachings of the Catholic Church. Our podcasts let you nurture your faith at any location, at your convenience, and at no cost. We are able to provide this free service because of the generosity of our donors. Would you consider giving a donation today to support this vital ministry? Not only is your donation tax deductible, but you will be helping to transform hearts, minds, and our culture for Christ. Donations can be made by going to breadboxmedia.com. Thank you, and may God bless you.